As public land hunters, we rarely get the opportunity to hunt a specific deer. Most of the time we have to be very opportunistic and jump on immediately fresh sign. You see a buck, you get eyes on him, and then you hunt him for that week and you either are successful with, with him or he moves off onto another property. So this particular buck, my 2022 Kansas buck, was a different story. It is deer season again, or at least really close to it. I'm finally getting out to Kansas. About to leave the gas station right now and head that direction. It's my first time on this property. I wasn't able to get out and do my postseason scouting like I typically do, but that is okay. That means I got to rely on my in season scouting and my trail camera strategy, which I'm going to implement starting right now. And hopefully, we can get some eyes on some big deer. Let's go. Very excited to see what this day has to offer. We got some really cool spot. That right there, that is it. Those little bad boys right here. That thing's dug out. We've got a licking branch right here, broke off. We got another licking branch on the cedar right there. So in short, this needs to be hunted and kept track of right now. My first hunt at the end of September was a very quick hunt. I wanted to use the rain and the cold front to get in, observe some activity, and check the cameras as well. I ended up getting rained out and wasn't able to hunt as much as I would like to have, but that's okay because I was able to check the easy to reach cameras and my number one top priority cameras and start gathering some intel and know exactly what was on the property. All right, so it was a pretty good hunt this morning overall. Saw three deer, two does, one little buck. A little buck, honestly, kind of looked like a antler doe. Kind of funky, still in velvet. I mean, you never know. So I'm about to head out and check the other camera and then head to my evening location. A big old rub. There's something good here, like we knew. So we're gonna keep, keep on keeping on, keep learning exactly how the deer use this property. I'm getting a, more of a feel for it every day. My next hunt didn't come until the middle of October when I knew that the scraping activity would pick up and I already had located super fresh scrapes i had a very good idea about what these deer were doing but i needed to confirm with in season scouting i also needed to pull some cameras to see what was going on and during th this hunt i was able to really learn what the wind did on this property this is a very key factor to my success going into the harvest of my 10 point all right it is day four five of my trip here in Kansas. I've collected a lot of data, saw quite a few deer, saw probably six or seven does already this morning and a small buck. Yesterday evening saw that two and a half year old eight point. Decent deer. It's nice to see some antler that's for sure. I'm really learning how the wind is is working on this particular location. I've got a lot of ditches and deep ravines very steep hill um ridges here so the wind has a, a funny swirl to it and it's going different directions so i'm just figuring it out using my milkweed and learning the property that way once the rut starts to kick in a little bit more i can come in here super educated and ready to go. So I'm gonna get down here. It's about a little after 11 now. I, I've been freezing all morning. It's straight up cold. Um, and make a move to a different location. Keep 
checking the wind as I go and really learning. And then the plan is to hunt tomorrow morning and then pack up and leave. Or check cameras while I'm out here and then leave. So let's get down. Let's make a move. Alright, what's going on everybody? It's November 4th and I am back in Kansas. It's been three weeks since I was here last time. I feel so much more confident about what I know about this property going into this weekend. I got here late last night. I knew it was going to rain today, but I wasn't really sure about how much it would rain, you know, how much of the day it was going to rain. And I mean, it's not raining right now, but it's been raining all day. It has been raining cats and dogs too. It's been heavy. So um, I have held up in the camper, went into town a little bit, did a little bit of work, got some food in me, and now just packed the bag. I'm ready for tomorrow. I'm ready. To, I'm ready to hit some rut action. I know these deer are going to be moving. I'm pumped. Ready to see what sign is fresh while I'm out there. And this rain will really help with that a lot. See what scrapes are actively being used. And we'll go from there. Even though this next hunt was extremely slow for me, I didn't see a lot of deer. This next hunt set me up for success. Because as I was walking into my number one tree stand location, I came across some scrapes that were fresh. And they were 50 yards from my original scrape that I, I was hunt, hunting. So I ended up, I stopped immediately and I set up into a pine tree, got up in a pine tree, hunted those super fresh gnarly scrapes. I mean, they were giant. And there was two to three of them right there in close proximity. And during mid midday, I got down, I grabbed my camera and moved it the 50 yards onto this scrape and, and during that morning set, I saw a deer, some deer at a distance, and one in particular looked really big. I wasn't sure exa exactly what he was because it was at a distance, but I'm like, man, that looks, that looks an awful lot like a big deer. And I'm like, that, that could be the deer that I'm after. Of course, I didn't know until I pulled that trail cam camera later on. At the end of that, that hunt, I made some rounds during the midday hunted the morning of that Monday and I had made some rounds that mid middle of the day pulled all of the cards that way I had all the data right there in my primary locations and I got out of there packed up and went home and as I checked the trail camera foot footage that buck had my number one buck that 10 point had daylighted the morning that I, I was sitting in that new tre tree stand location that more than likely that was him so i saw him over there i missed him by a little over a hundred yards as the crow flies and three hours because three hours after he daylighted on a on that scrape over there by that natural spring i had adjusted over to that scrape i saw a lot of deer movement over there so i went ahead and adjusted out of this tree and moved over there and i just Barely missed him. Just barely missed him. It was kind of a warmer weekend. There wasn't a whole lot going on. It was a slow wit weekend. But finding the scrapes that I found led me to success not maybe seven days later. So now I've collected enough data that I feel extremely confident in how this deer is using this particular property. He is only using the southern ridge. One scrape in particular he's using more often. And he only used this during some kind of southern wind, which is on the leeward side of that ridge. So I moved into this pine that I found the week bend before, the super fresh scrapes I had just moved my camera to. And the first deer on that camera was him. He's using those scrapes. I'm like, here it is. It's perfect. The wind was from the south for half the day, and then it was going to move to the north. So I was like, I'm going to hunt the 10 point on this southern ridge during the morning, and then during midday when it switches to the north, 
I'm going to bounce over to the northern side of the ridge and hunt that nine point that I was after. So that was my game plan going into Monday. As the morning went on, I saw a lot of deer activity. A hot doe came through and I ended up shooting him at 1040. So I didn't end up having to move over to the northern ridge, which was awesome. Rarely do plans work out so perfectly, but man, this this all came to came together. It was amazing getting to know this deer and how he used this property, especially with the wind. They, the deer, you could tell were not pressured very heavily, especially for public land deer. This just doesn't happen very often. So it was a whole lot of fun to put these pieces of the puzzle together and hunt. So let's get on into that Monday hunt. I'm pretty positive that was a hot doe that just came through.
that's the big ten point. Yeah, baby. Yeah. That's my number one target. I'm gonna keep my voice down just a hair here. I don't want to accidentally bump him until he's completely done expiring. Oh, yeah, baby. Wow, I've been shaking like a leaf, man. That's so exciting. I've had this ridge, these two ridge tops patterned according to wind. Every time I've had a south wind, they've daylighted on this ridge. Every time I've had a north wind, they've daylighted on that ridge. So this today, I was going in. I was supposed to have a south wind in the morning, north wind, through, switching to a north wind in the middle of the day. So I wanted to sit this tree and then move over. So I sat here. Got massive scrapes. There's a new scrape over there. The scrapes in front of me are giant. Been loaded with deer today. Had a hot doe come in. And then he came in not long after. Whew, what a nice buck. Holy cow. Man. I'm so excited. There's always that nervousness until you put your hands around him. So I want to be quiet here. And see if I can listen and hear anything and then we're gonna get down out of this tree because I'm cold and I'm shaking get my arrow and see what kind of blood I can find yeah baby we did it we did it oh, fingers crossed though let's get him All right, so I already, all right, so I already got my arrow, and honestly, I see him. The deer I was seeing walking was a completely different deer, so I wanted to give him a little extra time. I busted shoulder shoulder pretty hard, so um, it, I still got plenty of penetration, so I wasn't worried about it. But sometimes when you get that, when you don't get a full pass through sometimes I'd like to give him a little extra time just to just to expire where he's at rather than dragging on the blood trail I accidentally bumping him and dragging on the blood trail and possibly losing blood even on a fatal shot so yeah baby you got done in Kansas done in Kansas <laughs> that's so punk man okay Oh, he's a little ways up here. He ran about 60 yards, 70 yards. So, let's go put my hands around this guy. <laughs> there he is. Here. I'm gonna flip you guys around. Ain't no reason to keep watching me. Let's see where I'm, let's go get him. What a stud. Oh. done wow look at him y'all oh wow what a stud holy cow wow let's grab his antlers here these branches out of the way oh <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
Oh, right there, y'all. That right there is a Kansas freaking giant. Holy cow. Wow. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. <sighs> My number one target buck is laying right here. Dude. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to get set up for a, a real interview here and enjoy him for a second just kind of by myself off camera. So, man, I'm stoked. Holy cow. All right. I'll see y'all here in a few. Y'all, check out this stud. Holy cow. I mean, look at that. Look at this giant Kansas deer. What a, what a monster. Big old face on him. Big thick neck. I mean, what a beautiful, beautiful animal. This here was my number one target buck right here. Been getting pictures for, of him since September. Been slowly putting the pieces of the puzzle together and making it happen. Man, look at that. He's got, he's been rubbing hard. He's got a bunch of tree bark and everything on his, on the bases here. So it was a fun hunt. I tell you what, it was, I was covered in deer all day. Um, all morning it started off real quick with a couple does and then I had that hot doe come in and and she brought with the with her a little fork but I knew there was more going to be happening so I stuck it out it was a perfect weather I mean overcast it's just now starting to flurry a little, little bit cold and the wind was real real mellow and I remember t telling you before I left the tree stand, I chose this stand location because I had a south wind this morning. And every time he's daylighted on this ridge, he's daylighted with a south, some kind of south wind. So I'm like, this is my opportunity. Rut's kicking in hard. And I want to go see if I can't put him on the ground. And man, I love it when plans come together like that. You know, rarely do all the plans you know perfectly come together like we hope they would but you know what that is okay that's deer hunting this is my redemption i had that opportunity on that giant in missouri on saturday on opening morning of rifle and just couldn't get get it done and then but i knew that my best sign was hit here in kansas and i wanted to rush back here so i could hit the rut and it did not disappoint I had a few bucks I had my eyes on. This was the number one. He's going home with me. So it has been a grind of a season. And to, to capitalize on a deer like this is just ecstatic. So I'm super pumped and ready to get him <laughs> ready to go home and get some sleep. Ready to get him home. So I had a blowout actually on the trailer last night on my way from deer camp in missouri over here to kansas so that was a late night i'm running on like four hours of sleep tops but you know what this is why we do it right here i'm super pumped i had a lot of work to do to get him out of the woods in total i covered three i did three different round trips and covered right around nine miles and 1200 feet of elevation change i had two trips out with him and it was just i was wiped out but i tell you what i am okay with any work that had to be done it was amazing i had to hurry and beat the snowstorm i got camp all packed up really fast and and headed home that way i didn't get snowed in or iced in that overnight because it was going to get extremely cold that night so I try to get out of it there as fast as I can, all while savoring the moment. This is the first deer I've harvested out of my saddle, which was exciting in itself. And just the fact that I was able to successfully come out of that hunt with my number one target deer, it's such a satisfaction that is really hard to explain. So thanks for watching y'all. I am super pumped to share this story with, with you. I had an amazing time hunting this deer and producing the, these videos for you all to enjoy. Please hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you on the next video.